what are the Gospels? It is by looking at the way that the Gospels were written that you understand what they really are. In the first century, it may have been thought that the Gospels were the accounts of real events written by Galilean fishermen, because that is what they claim to be, and they claim to be four very separate narratives written independently by four different individuals. In my work, I, I show that, that Matthew was composed not as a work of history, but as a work of literature. It was composed on the model of the Torah. And the Torah, um, which is the traditional um, sacred book of the Jews, consists of, of five, five sacred books. And these five sacred books were used as the basis for creating the five divisions in the book of Matthew. Um, the book of Genesis, which means the origin, was used to compose the origin of Jesus in the book of Matthew. The theme of Exodus, meaning leaving Egypt, was used to compose in the Gospel of Matthew the passage about Jesus visiting Egypt. It's just like a reversal of what it is in, 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 in Torah. Then you have the book of Numbers, which in, um, in Hebrew means the book of the wilderness. And that leads to the passage in the book of Matthew in which Jesus goes on into the wilderness. And then you have the major section, um, the book of Deuteronomy, in which Moses gives law to um, the, the Israelites on the mountain. And that is used in the book of Matthew to create um, the story of the Sermon on the Mount, in which Jesus gives, the, gives a new law. And finally, the book of Leviticus comes out of the, um, the Torah and is put at the end of the book of Matthew, and that is the account of the sacrifice, and that is used to create the story of the crucifixion. In the book of Exodus, we have the story of how the Lord God said to Moses, um, go to Egypt and come back from Egypt, and this was used as a literary model by the author of the chapter 2 of Matthew to describe how um, Jesus' father was told to go into Egypt um, because there was the uh, destruction of the children, which parallels the destruction of the firstborn in the Exodus story, and is then told to come, to come back from Egypt, um, which again parallels the story in Exodus 4. So one is used as a literary type um, to compose, compose the other. This is not history, this is literature. But the most critical material is the material that relates to the Flavian Caesars, Vespasian and Titus Caesar, because they were the people who destroyed Jerusalem and then came back and established the new dynasty of the Flavian emperors. And it was during their reign that the early Gospels were written. The Flavian dynasty was deeply anti-Semitic, as you might expect, um, since it had just defeated the, the, the Jews in a, a very long, prolong, prolonged battle. And it was also um, very interested in false literature. This is not history, this is literature, and it is created through typology by taking events that existed in reality, in the um, works of Josephus, recounting the story of the Roman Jewish war in which Titus and Vespasian had, had defeated the Jews, and these events in which the Jews lost major battles are taken into Matthew, where they are portrayed and associated with Jesus. The Romans had every incentive for trying to pacify the Jewish people by giving them a, a, a messiah figure because the Jews wanted to have a messiah, but this time they would get um, a dead messiah, um, a messiah who was pacifistic and who was really an allegory for the Roman emperor himself. The Romans knew there would be opposition to their rule, whatever they did. So in creating the Gospels, they created a sort of very clever counter-strategy. They co-opted the opposition by creating an opposition movement of their own, a sort of peace movement. They created a peace movement of their very own, but the peace movement was centered on the worship of Caesar. And then they tried to present it as a rebellion against Rome, and that is why the texts have elements of, of, of appearing to be anti-Rome, but they're really pro-Rome. And if you end up worshiping Jesus, what you will really end up doing is worshiping Caesar in disguise. 
The way that the Romans governed govern their empire was through religion. The Romans were very good at inventing religions. They had whole departments of bureaucracy, a whole civil service that was dedicated to, to doing so. Um, and the idea was that what they would do is they would co-opt um, the religions of any existing people and take them over. Um, and normally, if you had statues, you would cut off the heads of all the statues and put the heads of the Roman emperors on it. The Jews, of course, didn't have statues. What the Jews had was literature. So what the Romans did, they couldn't take over the statues, they took over the literature. They destroyed the, the existing, existing literature, they destroyed the Torah scrolls, and they created their own literature. Torah was actually used to create a parody of Torah, namely the Gospel of Matthew, because it is based on the same five books Moses, which are the first five books of the Old Testament, and they were used to create Matthew as a sort of parody or fake Torah. The time is ripe to create a new way of approaching New Testament scholarship that actually shows it is actually exciting and significant and important, um, not, that, not based on the idea that these things are accounts of history, but based on the idea that these things are works of imperial propaganda created by the Romans um, we are in a world of, of, of craziness that is caused by people not understanding these texts. So I think there is a massive political need um, to, to understand these texts correctly. And that is why I, I believe um, that this work showing that these texts are works of Roman origin and works of literature, not history, is so critical.